Thank you, Acting Speaker. On Simchat Torah, a Jewish festival of celebration, Saturday, 7 October 2023, more Jewish lives were taken on that single day than any other since 1945. It was a day of disbelief, a day of devastation, of panic for loved ones. My community were frantically messaging their family and friends, writing messages like, are you safe? Are you okay? The bonds between Australia's Jewish people and the people of Israel run deep. They are bonds of family, of friendship. My community is feeling the devastation of seeing their brothers and sisters being terrorised in the most graphic and gruesome fashion. Yet in all of the carnage, I witness humanity rise to the surface. I witness people light up the darkness. The community came together in prayer, in solidarity and in immense sadness. We mourned with each other. We sought to comfort each other. We sought to love one another, to help get through the collective grief that each and every single person is carrying. And in that spirit of humanity, I, expand, I extend my deepest sympathies to the families of those who were brutally murdered just over one week ago, to the Israelis, the Americans, the Thais, the Australians, the Kiwis, the Germans, the French, the Italians, the Bedouins and the many more families who lost loved ones on that day. Let me also take this moment to extend my deepest sympathies to the families of innocent Palestinians. I recognise your grief and I see your heartache. The humanity we share cannot be lost. We witnessed what happens when humanity is lost. It looks like the heinous acts of terror perpetrated by Hamas. These attacks were barbaric, abhorrent and totally unjustifiable. They were carried out by terrorists who have shown complete disregard for human life, for children, for women, for elderly people just going about their day. I dream of seeing peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians. I dream of two peoples living side by side and that dream feels further away than ever. And the true tragedy of Hamas's terror is that it was specifically designed to further divide our two peoples and to fuel this conflict. Hamas sought to indiscriminately terrorise civilians, only then to cower behind them, putting innocent people in harm's way. They are the instigator, and they continue to fire indiscriminate rockets towards civilians. Up to 150 innocent civilians have been kidnapped and taken into Gaza. The violence and terror continues. The extent of the death toll is hard to comprehend. Many of us remember with horror the Bali bombings of 2002, when terrorists killed 202 people, of which 88 were Australians. And yet the rising death toll of this terror attack is more than 1,300 people. Australia has consistently stood against terrorism and today we reaffirm our unwavering commitment to that cause. If these were Australians, what would we do? If Australian kids had been gunned down at a music festival, what would we do? If Australian babies and women and elderly people were brutally butchered in their own homes, what would we do? And I know this conflict is complex, with deep history, but this week the world has seen the enormous threat to the Israeli people. Israel does not just have a right to exist, it has an obligation to protect its citizens, just as Australia does. And if this attack had happened to Australia, Australians would, would be demanding this parliament act in a way that ensured this terror could not happen again. The story of the Jewish people is one of extraordinary courage and resilience. But this week, my community has faced a reality beyond our worst nightmares. We witnessed devastation in Israel only, be, only to be confronted with scenes at home in support of the perpetrators. Less than 24 hours after the attack, as the body count was rising, people gathered at our country's most iconic landmark, the Sydney Opera House, and chanted anti-Semitic slurs echoing the worst of the Holocaust. We've seen flags burnt, Nazi salutes on Melbourne trains and a stream of online abuse with justifications of the murder 
of innocent Jewish lives. My community is heartbroken and my people are suffering. Trying to reconcile the atrocities overseas and the scenes at home. It makes the resolute support that I and the Jewish community have received from colleagues in this parliament so meaningful. On Wednesday, the foreign minister spoke at the Australia-Israel Chamber of Commerce. She made a speech in support of Israel that was strong and heartfelt. On Thursday, the Prime Minister came to my electorate, to the St Kilda Synagogue, where he met with leaders and members of the Jewish community. He spoke movingly of his support for Israel and for our community. I can tell the House that the Jewish community deeply, deeply appreciated his words, just as they've deeply appreciated the words of people right across the political aisle. I want to thank the leaders of this place for their unwavering support and solidarity. I want to acknowledge people who are hurting across the parliament, including my friend, the member for Barawa. I also want to acknowledge my state Liberal colleague, David Southwick, who has stood united with me as we work to support our people in this time. So we gather today to stand in solidarity with the people of Israel from within the Australian parliament, just as we stood with them as we cast the first vote in 1947 to help establish the State of Israel after witnessing the darkest chapter in human history. We must stand against terrorism, against anti-Semitism and against hatred in all its forms. The people of Israel, the Palestinian people and indeed all humanity deserve nothing less. I will finish with a prayer that is said by Jewish people during the daily prayers. Its underlying translation asks for one thing above all, that for Israel, for the Jewish people, and for the entire world, there should be peace. Ose shalom bimromav, huya ase shalom, aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael, ve'imru, amen. <laughs>